An earlier video showed how plants can use sunlight to convert low energy carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil into high energy glucose along with that very useful gas, oxygen. This is the word equation for the reaction showing how we start with carbon dioxide, water and sunlight energy and end up with glucose and oxygen. Here are the structural formulas showing how the carbon dioxide and water molecules are rearranged into glucose and oxygen molecules. The molecular formula for glucose is C6H12O6 and it's the glucose that we're interested in because this is the golden egg which the plant has made and which it can fashion further into incredibly valuable molecules not only for the plant but also for us. Glucose is a kind of sugar which you'll discover if you eat it in its pure form. Honey and some energy drinks contain lots of glucose. Check out the labels. Using helper molecules called enzymes, plants can link two glucose molecules together by the removal of an OH group from one and an H from the other, which then come together to form a water molecule, H2O. This water extraction, called condensation, opens up two unused bonds, one on each remaining glucose molecule, that can then be used to join them together into a new molecule called maltose. Condensation is a chemical reaction because bonds are rearranged and new molecules are formed, so it can be written as an equation that counts the number of atoms before and after the change. We started with glucose and ended with maltose and the water that was extracted and disappeared from the stage. Glucose is C6H12O6. Maltose is, well, let's count the atoms. It has 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens. So its molecular formula is C12H22O11. And of course, water is H2O. If you want to balance the carbons by yourself first, then pause now. There are 6 on the left hand side and 12 on the right hand side. Put a coefficient of 2 in front of the glucose to make 12 on the left hand side as well. So now they're balanced. Now for the hydrogens, and pause if you want to. On the left hand side there are 24 inside 2 glucose molecules. On the right hand side there are 22 inside the maltose molecule and 2 inside the water molecule, a total of 24. They're already balanced. It turns out that the oxygen atoms are already balanced too. On the left hand side there are 12 atoms and on the right hand side there are 11 inside the maltose molecule and 1 inside the water molecule. A total of 12 as well. All atom kinds are now balanced. Our condensation equation is telling us that two glucose molecules join to become one maltose molecule and one water molecule, exactly as we saw. The word condensation here refers to a chemical change in which new molecules are made and shouldn't be confused with the same word that's used when a gas turns into a liquid, such as water vapour condensing into dew early in the morning. That's only a physical change because water vapour and water liquid are both made of H2O molecules. We could write this physical condensation as an equation with the water in its vapour or gaseous form at the beginning and water in its liquid form at the end.
The G in bracket stands for the gaseous state and the L stands for the liquid state. You can see that no bonds have been broken and no new substance has been formed. It's H2O on both sides. This kind of condensation is only a change of state and the main difference is that the H2O molecules are just closer together in the liquid than in the gas. When the chemical kind of condensation with glucose molecules is repeated many times, thousands or even hundreds of thousands can join together into a long chain. The new bonds that join the glucose molecules together are called glycosidic bonds. The molecule can have branches in it when the join occurs at a different position on a glucose unit. The branches can even have branches. We'll simplify the glucose molecules by replacing them with simple hexagon shapes. When we zoom out, you can see the branches and the branches of branches. Some molecules can be curly, others are spiral, and they're all flexible. A long molecule that is made of many smaller molecules like this is called a polymer. Some polymers are made naturally like this one, and others are made artificially in a factory or in a lab. The substance that these polymer molecules make is called starch, and it's one of our most important foods. If starch is soaked or boiled in water, the water molecules can get in between the flexible starch molecules, as well as between the molecule's branches, and separate them from each other. This makes the starch swell and go mushy. When you eat it, special enzymes inside your body assist water molecules to insert themselves back into the same place where they were originally extracted and break the starch molecule into smaller bits. This water reinsertion and breaking of the glycosidic bonds is called hydrolysis. It's the reverse chemical reaction of condensation. It enables your body to turn starch back into glucose, which your bloodstream then carries around your body to all its cells, providing them with the fuel that they need. The chain ends and branch tips are usually the first places to be hydrolyzed. And it's a good thing that the molecular breakup doesn't happen instantly. Otherwise, your bloodstream would be flooded with more glucose molecules than it could handle at any one time. This also means that it's healthier to eat long-chained starch than short glucose molecules. Over time, the starch is broken down completely into glucose, which your body then uses as a fuel. Wheat grains have a lot of starch inside them, and we grind them into flour to make into goodies like bread and pasta. Rice is also rich in starch, and we eat this grain without grinding after its husk has been removed. And don't forget potatoes, oats and corn to add variety to your starch diet. The scientific term for sugar comes from its Greek word saccharide. And because glucose belongs to the simplest group of sugars, it's called a monosaccharide. Maltose consists of two glucose molecules joined together, so it's called a disaccharide. Di means two. Because a starch molecule is made of many glucose molecules joined together, it's called a polysaccharide. In the next videos, we'll look at other examples of mono, di and polysaccharides. You've probably met them already without realising their amazing chemical story.